Dr. Marietta, welcome to Baby Brunch. Today we are chatting potty training. I'm just going to get straight into our questions because here's the thing, milestones are different to all of us. Most of the time I joke about it and I say the word milestones, I want to throw it out with the baby's bath water and get rid of this book that tells us when our baby should be doing what. But do you have a lot of clients that come and see you with regarding to, to with regards to potty training or um, is it just me? No, it's definitely not you. We, we frequently see parents that um, are very unsure of when they should start, when is the right time, or they compare themselves with um, my sister's child is already potty training and mine isn't. So there's, there's always that little bit of family competitiveness and then uncertainty. Doctor, what are the signs for potty readiness? How do I know that now is the time that we need to start training? I think one of the first signs that you notice is that your child will be dry for longer periods during the day. You don't have to change their nappies as often. So that's the first sign that they can hold their urine for a while. The second sign is they are aware of what they're doing. They will tell you, mom, I had to pee, or mom, I made a number two. And when they, when they have those two things, they usually show an interest. They will follow you or an older sibling into the bathroom. They will start mimicking behavior. And when they have those three signs, the most important thing is to make sure that your child can independently dress and undress themselves. Because a child that can't pull down his, his diaper or his pants won't be able to potty train yet. And then the last thing to look out for is that your child should be able to communicate properly. Your child should be able to verbalize the need that they have to go to the bathroom. So when those things are in place, then you can start potty training. Do we develop our own language? I mean, do we go with a mommy want to make poo poo or mommy, I want to make pee pee. Is that considered adequate language for baby to start training or even when they can't pull down yet? I mean, some of them are still in a little bit of pull up nappies and they are at preschool and usually their teacher will say, oh, we only had one poo today or that there was some kind of achievement. Mm. So will that be adequate or do we develop this own language that we sometimes do most of the time? You know, I think you know, it depends on, on your household and what's acceptable in your household. If you want to sugarcoat the words, then you're more than welcome to. If you want to call it what it is, go ahead. How should we handle accidents? I mean, do we get excited about it and say, oh dear, there was a little accident or do we actually just leave it? Yeah, you know, well, that's a very important question, Ilona, because a negative connotation during the time that you're potty training can have a very long lasting effect. And that can actually delay the whole process. So try not to make a fuss. I know, especially now it's winter time. If there's an accident, it's a lot of clothes to wash. It's a big mess. But try not to make a fuss. Be cool, be calm, collected, um, and supportive. Mm. Supportive is a beautiful word. We love that here at Baby Branch. We had a podcast not too long ago uh, about bedwetting. And I want to know if the two goes hand in hand. So now you're trying to train to keep it in the day, but sometimes at night, it's still perhaps an issue. Do we say that bedwetting and potty training goes hand in hand or are they two separate issues? They sort of go hand in hand, but when you start potty training, children are ready roughly at two, two and a half years to start potty training. It takes a longer time to be completely dry at night usually between the ages of three and a half to four. And in boys, it's, it's acceptable to be a bedwetter until the age of six years. So especially if you're a very deep sleeper, you won't wake up to go to the bathroom. And um, we, we generally don't advise treatment if it's before the age of six, but you know, it does go hand in hand, but bedwetting is, is a topic on its own. You will have a child that's dry during the day, and for some reason have bed waiting at night. Do we bribe with a little chocolate? If you keep your pee, -pee in, mommy gonna get you a sweetie or lollipop, or do we, do we hand out rewards? Like when there is a little droliki, do we say yay and clap hands like they taught us at school, at, at baby school and give a sweetie? Do we give rewards? I think we have to define what we mean by a reward. Is it necessarily something physical or is it praise? What, what's your child's love language? 
because praise can be a big reward and children need to feel that sense of achievement. Mm. So it, it depends on your specific child. If praise alone is enough, then great. If it's a store chart, use that. If you promise them to take them for a milkshake at the end of the week, if there are no accidents, then do that. Mm. You talked about, you know, the difference and we, we've discussed now a little bit bedwetting and potty training. What, what would be a common problem or considered a problem when it comes to potty training? I mean, you've mentioned the age now and that even boys have a little bit of leeway, you know, they can, they can uh, up until the age of six, what would be a, a considered a problem? When do we see our pediatrician when we think there's an issue with potty training? The most common question I have is about the number two. They will be able to potty train regarding urine very early, very quickly. Right. And they struggle with the number two. They, they don't sit long enough. Our toddlers are busy bodies. They run around. It's an issue to get them to do it in the toilet. And sometimes they will ask you for a diaper. So in terms of that, we generally advise that you go to the bathroom with them, you sit down, read them a book, show them a little story on your phone or an mm. iPad, sing songs, make, make it fun and get them to actually sit down and spend time on the toilet. You've now mentioned something, and I mean, this wasn't even in our questions for today, but I was just reminded again that number two becomes an issue even past party training. And I can see how sometimes I need to haul out the pedicle and anything else that can just make baby and, and little girl go. And so I want to ask, I mean, does this stay an issue for a long time? Are we going to have to sit with, with toddler, with, with baby and toddler and even little girl for a longer time? Is it quite common that kids struggle with a number two or a poop? Constipation is a very common problem in children and it's generally because they're also busy mm. and they want to play. So it's usually run to the bathroom, drop it like it's hot and get out. <laughs> but you don't spend time and empty that colon. <laughs> when do we see it as problematic? I've actually, one of our podcast moms that we interviewed had had an issue around that where they had to seek medical advice and eventually the baby was admitted because of constipation. I mean, how do we know that it is an actual problem? I see them pushing on the stomach to see if there's something in the bowel. Is there something that we can practically do at home to just make sure that we're on the right track? Well, it, it's problematic if a child has symptoms of constipation. Mm. That will be bleeding or pain when they go to the bathroom or right. abdominal pain. So right. as soon as your child verbalizes that they're uncomfortable and, and it's painful, what if all goes well, but there's still anxiety around potty training, but it's school. So everything at home is fine, but they come home with accidents or won't tell teacher that they actually need to go. Shy children generally struggle with that. And schools are very supportive and open-minded, I found. Um, and I think it's important when you have a child that struggles with that to find one teacher or one assistant that focuses on your child and takes your child to the bathroom so that he doesn't have to go around asking different people. It's one person and that person takes your child to the bathroom. If they are in the bathroom or they don't want to go in front of friends, ask the teacher to take them after the bathroom break when everyone's washed hands and left and, and gone back to class. Then they can use the bathroom on their own until they build up confidence. I'm thinking of all of us that are really, you know, sometimes we are so time dependent. How long will it take? Give us, give us exactly how long. And, and if we had to say that there's a mom or dad that's trying to potty train and it's taken a while, what would a while be? And when do we come and seek professional advice? Well, generally, if it takes you longer than six months to get your child, to get your child dry in terms of urine, that's too long. Mm -hmm. But one of the biggest reasons why it takes too long is the fact that your child wasn't ready when you started. Wow. Wow. And what about consistency? Does that play a role? Definitely. Definitely. When you decide that you're going to potty train, that's it. It's potty training everywhere. It's potty training at grandma's house. It's potty training at the mall. Potty training is it. <laughs> And then lastly, doctor, mm -hmm. I know that your time is precious. Winter is a very busy time for our pediatricians. So thanks for your time again. Do, does it matter whether it is a Winnie the Pooh toilet or those fancy ones where you climb on it and it starts singing when you make a little draw leaky? Or does it really matter? Or should we just invest in a plain old red potty 
that stands in the corner of the room? Well, you can choose whatever you want. Um, I don't think there's I don't think there's a brand that poops better if you, if you get what I say. Even if you don't want to take uh, spend a lot of money, get a get a ring and put it in your normal toilet. <laughs> Listen, before you go, a story. So I I remember when I was party chatting the girls, we had we had two red parties. So one was in the bathroom and then one was in the living room because Genade Viet, my my youngest, she always wanted to poop in the living room. So she would leave her drolly keys <laughs> in the living room. And eventually I just gave up, I bought two parties. So one was always in the bathroom and one was in the living room. And then eventually she started using it. She started using the one in the living room. That same party traveled with me. So I was the mom with a big car with a party in the boot. And often we would stop at a place like a mall and I would think, oh, no, this kid needs to go. And I would have her in the boot sit because the, the car was quite high i would have a sit in the boot making a poop in the boot and it's easy to drive with poop well at that stage i would just fill it with toilet paper afterwards <laughs> and put it in the passions of seat on the on the floor and just drive and it seemed really practical at the time but when i look back at it now i'm thinking the things we would do for our kids how ridiculous so it's we want to it yeah. is that we want to thank you today <laughs> for your time uh, Dr. Kombrink, we appreciate you. Uh, thanks for what you do for all of our moms and our children and for keeping us safe and for all the panada uh, that you prescribe together with the Nurofen. Yeah. Very important that Nurofen, beloveds. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> Thank you. Take care.